Hello everyone, in this video I want to give you a quick tour of one of my favorite product roadmap tools, it's called Product Board, and how it may help you bring some clarity to your product strategy. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Javi and I make weekly videos about principles, practices and skills to help you build great products. If that sounds like something that you'd be interested in seeing more of, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. It is easier than ever to build anything, but it's harder than ever to know what to build and how to prioritize features. That is where a well-documented and well-communicated product roadmap comes in. Let's go ahead and dive into product board so I can show you what I mean with some context. Okay, so this is the main product board interface. You can see that there are four main sections here for insights, features, roadmap, and portal. So let's just do a quick walkthrough through each of them, starting with insights. Insights is essentially an inbox where all your customer feedback comes into play. What's really cool about this insights board is you can integrate it with any existing apps that you may have. And product board has some native support here for very popular apps like Slack or intercom. And then other things that are really handy here is that as you can see, these are all the insights that we have in our inbox right now. I can Go ahead and mark them as processed once they're done. And you can see that for each task, I get an idea of the company that's involved or a specific user that's giving me that feedback, right? So I could go ahead and come in here into the send us ticket and see that this is assigned to a Pied Piper company user three. I could give this ticket some tags within product board. So if there's any particular way that you wanna organize your feedback to go through it more effectively, you can either create collections or tags. So that is very helpful. Let's say that this piece right here, new messaging features are epic. I could go ahead and just click on this. And what it's essentially doing is we're assigning a piece of feedback over to a feature. So this is a very smooth process. If you want to associate any form of qualitative feedback from your users and assign it over to your features board, which we'll see in just a second, I can go ahead and highlight this. And now let's say I would connected to, let's say, Slack messaging. So I'm just gonna assign it to edit message, for example, even though it has nothing to do with it. Um, but the point is that I can then go ahead and assign the importance, right? So what is this insight actually telling me? How much does the user uh, actually care about this particular feature? And you can assign it to some categorization here. So we could say that this shows me that this feature would be a nice to have. So let's do that. And you can link it to multiple features if that's the case. And then essentially the other things to show here is that you can come into any of your users here, for example, company A, and if you ever have any insights associated to that user, it's gonna show in the user profile that only admins can see, right? So if we're looking at company A right here, you've got a description, you've got some custom fields, you can assign more custom fields if you want to. And then here are the filter insights and how they are associated to features. So that is really, really great in terms of doing that connection between insights and your features board. Once you are done processing a particular note, you can go ahead and select it and click on mark as processed. And this will just remove it from your inbox, but if you ever need to reaccess it, you can go over to your all notes section here and it will reappear just as it was before, you can bring it back to your inbox if needed over here. That's a quick overview of the insights tab. Let's go ahead and look at our features board, which is next. My favorite aspect about this features board is that it helps you manage your features with outcomes and epics and job stories in mind. So if we were to look at, for example, this demo data that we're given once we sign up to product board, you can see that these associations are very clear. What you have right underneath each product area are components, which you could associate to epics or any particular outcome that you're trying to achieve for your users, right? So in this case, communicate with teammates. And each of these components is then structured into features. So for example, author and submit message, edit message, and you can see that features can also have sub features. So it's a very intuitive and very flexible system to help you go all the way from the top, from your product area, all the way down to features and sub features. And to each of these, to help you manage your product, you can specify properties, such as what's the value that this particular feature would be driving for your product, right? So you can associate that to some values here. So if we were to, for example, 
come in here to this one that I created. I created a component called Discover New Recipes for my Fiberly app. And I can come here into, for example, the recipe page and say, okay, how, how much value do I think this particular feature is gonna bring to my product area overall? So I could come in here and say, well, I think this is gonna be pretty impactful. And you can see automatically that based on the value and the effort level of that particular feature, there's already being created a value effort score to help me see the relationship between how much value we're bringing to customers and how much it's gonna take us to get there so that I can prioritize things accordingly to that ratio if I want to. I could come in here and adjust the value of the effort. So let's say instead of five, this could be like 13. And you can see that automatically the effort score here ratio is being decreased down. And another thing that I really like about this view is that you can introduce more complexity as you need. So in this case, we just have drivers and then I can associate features to releases. But if you come over here to your right area, there's a lot more that I'm not gonna get too much into detail on, but essentially it's like adding properties to your table, right? So if you, for example, care about a particular task, right? Whether a particular task is being achieved for a feature set, you could come in here and say, well, I wanna see if the product specs for these features is ready, right? So I could come back here and now you have that extra bit of granularity that is added to your table. And being able to customize this view is very important if you're thinking about the different types of audiences or people that are gonna be looking at your features board. And that takes me straight to this area right here that's called views, right? So this could be, for example, a feature prioritization view. This could be a feature planning view that's more specific about the particular releases and what is being included in this release. So you could imagine that, for example, this page is more relevant for people that care about what's being included in each release and for very high level observation of whether the tasks are being achieved, right? So here you can see specifically that what we defined earlier in this view is a lot more relevant. You can come here and also see other views like feedback driven prioritization. So in order to help you prioritize features based on any feedback that you're getting from customers, and then you can have, I was starting to work on some crazy views here. I wanted to create a view and I just realized there's this matrix view. What we can do here is choose an objective, like for example, drive ongoing user engagement. And as you can see, it creates a very nice visual in a matrix with the Y and X axis for, in this case, value and effort. And it allows me to see essentially how those features compare according to those values. And if I ever have to move things around, you can see that the left area and the bottom area are changing based on how I'm adjusting the effort and the value in a visual way using the matrix. So that is awesome. You can also come in here and change the objectives to see how features compare in different ways. And so that's an overview of all the power that you can achieve through the features board. Now, similar to the features board, the roadmap also has multiple views, which is super important when you're managing a roadmap. You wanna have it well communicated to the different audiences that are looking at this and also making sure that each of those views has specific properties that they care the most about. And so you can do that very easily by being able to come here to your views in the same way that we did for features. And you can see here in the demo, for example, that you have one roadmap here that is very release driven. So you can see different features, how they rank based on the release that they're being launched on. And you can see that there are two rows here from my two different product areas. And if I want to say decide that Google SSO is not something we're gonna have shipped by release one, I can just easily drag it over to release two. I can also come here into the views and I could have different kinds of views for different kinds of audiences, like for example, uh, having a status roadmap that shows me the different features of a product area based on what their status of completion is. So that is another view you can have. You can have a features timeline roadmap. And as you can appreciate for this particular view, it's a lot more granular. It's a lot more narrow in terms of focus. And you can see that by just noting the time specificity here, it's a lot more narrow. So you're getting a level of detail all the way down to the dates, right? And you can easily adjust dates just clicking and dragging things around. And you can also set milestones. 
for your team, right? So if you think that there's going to be a particular milestone that we have to reach by this date, you can just go ahead and name that milestone, give it a date, and you're good to go. So as you can see, product management is really simple in Product Board, and it makes it very intuitive for you to be able to create different views. And that is basically everything I want to tell you about roadmaps. The last tab that I want to show you is called Portal. And Portal is a really great tool that you can use to capture customer feedback about your features. So as you can see, when you start, you have three tabs here in your portal. One is called Under Construction, Planned and Launched. You could think of Under Construction as a series of features, for example, that you're speculative upon, that you're exploring, and you're not sure how exactly you want to shape them to get the most value out of them. So one way that you can get more feedback is by literally putting them on your portal so people can see what you're thinking about. So it encourages a little bit of co-creation and transparency, and you can get the feedback you need to shape it to the best of your customer's needs. It's divided into sections, so you can create any new sections here to be able to better organize how your portal looks for the people that are browsing it. And as you can see, for all of the features here, I could, for example, click here into improve Dropbox Sync. And there's a few things that you can do once you're in here. You can compose an update for anyone who's been interested in tuning in or hearing about this particular feature release. So I'm here writing my update and I can decide how I wanna notify the users that wanted to be informed about this feature. You can also see some relevant information from across your product board infrastructure, such as the customers or the companies that are related to this feature in one way or another, giving you feedback and also insights. If we go over to our tabs here, when we look at plans, you can think of this one more as features that you know that you are gonna build and you wanna put them out there so people know what you're definitely going to be working on and shipping over the next few months. And this may be great if you got some really cool features coming up that you think are gonna really attract a lot of customers. And whenever you're doing sales or marketing, it's a really great place to take people to so they can see how your product will be able to cater to their needs down the line as you progress with your roadmap. So they could come in here, let's say, and subscribe to any particular feature that they really care about. And once you've got an update for those customers that have been waiting for this feature, they're gonna get notified and then they're gonna sign up to your product because you shipped what you promised and what you had put in your portal. If you wanna add a feature to your portal, all you have to do is either go to the features tab that we saw earlier or just hover over this add feature to portal. And I could decide what level of granularity I wanna show for that feature card appearing in the portal. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on the entire collection here. And as you can see, now I am prompt with this model that is going to encourage me to define how this card is gonna look like in the portal. So I could upload an image that maybe gives a little preview of what I'm building. And also I can put a title and a description of what this feature should be about or what's the value that users would be able to get out of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a description to this. And when I'm done, all I have to do is click on create. And now you can see that discover new recipes is part of my portal. Now, how do you share the entire portal with your customers? There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can just hover over here to the share button and you can decide what level of privacy your portal should have. I would say that if your intention is to share this with people that are external from your company, the two most relevant options here would be either to create a private link or to make it public and you can do things like setting it up to a custom domain, which is really nice if let's say you would have that as a link that's available through your public marketing website. And just so you get an idea of how this looks like in real life and in action, I just wanted to quickly show you how Product Board itself is using Portal. And you can see that they have a very similar tab structure. So under consideration, planned. They even have a tab here for in beta with features that they are exploring with beta testers. And if you were to go to any particular one of these, you could, let's say, if you are a user of Product Board and you really care about Drift integration, you can come in here and see that 25 other people are really interested in this. And if this is important to you, then you can just go ahead and point that out. So you could say, this is uh, nice to have for me. And as you can see, it will prompt you with the ability to add a description so you can provide any specific context for why this is important to you. And it will also ask you for your email address. So anytime that there's an update that the creators want to notify you about, then you're going to get notified via email. So that is all for today. I hope I was able to help you learn something new about product roadmaps 
or if you are in the process of ongoing research about what tool to use for your particular purpose, whether product board may be a fit for you or not. If you are interested in more weekly videos about principles and practices and skills to help you build great products, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned to future videos. As always, stay safe and I will catch you in the next one.